Welcome back to Miscellaneous Electrical Material Part 3. This is your host Sam with Everything Electrical. Um, we, we've been through Part 1 and Part 2. And Part 3 is just kind of a continuance of Part 2. We're still here in my garage and uh, we left off on this shelf and I was going over this stuff. Now we're going to move to the bottom. And without wasting too much time, we'll get started and I will go from the left to right. Here, just have a big bucket full of um, uh, EMT fittings. Some couple of these connectors in there, and no big deal. We've been over those. Uh, some more anchors, sleeve anchors. Uh, we've been over those. Um, uh, those twist and lock sheetrock anchors. Uh, basically, how those work. You take a, this thing right here, screws into the sheetrock. Bam, just like that, into the wall, and once that's in the wall, you can run the screw into that, and it gives you a support anchor on sheetrock she -rock walls, alternative to having a wood stud. These are called a nail-in anchor, or a, yeah, I call them nail-in anchors, and this is for like running conduit on concrete walls, concrete ceilings. You drill your hole with your mason bit, and you can just knock those guys right in with the hammer. Pretty cool. Um, this right here, these are just something totally different. Um, it's like one of those dotty, catty, exotic type things that you like pilot a hole out, and then you can drill this into that hole, whether it's wood or even steel, I think. Uh, so I, would, I inherited this, but... Um, Anyway, they, uh, there's a little thread in there you can run like quarter inch all thread out of a way to like give you a means to run all thread, maybe on an exposed ceiling. I don't know. Haven't used those yet, but um, a, guy, a guy that I didn't even know um, either passed away or banded all, a bunch of electrical stuff and I just happened to uh, be able to like come in and they just gave it to me so it's pretty cool here's some uh, jack chain that's for like supporting uh, fluorescent fixtures from uh, uh, steel uh, like red iron and stuff you can drop this down and you can hang hang lights on them there's probably a hundred thousand different uses for this stuff uh, if you wanted to be creative but term is jack chain. Most commonly electrician would see it for like dropping down fluorescent lights, commercial setting. Um, down here in the corner, I don't know if you can see that, but that is known as tie wire. And they use that to tie rebar together in concrete slabs. But we use it for different things. It can be used, I've seen it used to make heads on wire poles. Um, you can make a basket if you like. In certain situations you would use that. Um, there's just a bunch of different things you can do with this, uh, but anyway, you'll see that it's tie, called tie wire, and usually it's for like if you're roughing in a PVC pipe into a into a concrete slab that concrete hasn't been poured yet, you'd use that to tie your like PVC conduit to hold it in the spot that you want it, uh, so it doesn't move around. Here I have some PVC fittings. This is uh, a three-quarter PVC 90, and I have uh, here. This is a three-quarter coupling on the left. I'll show you. That's a coupling, and this is a connector, or otherwise known as a metal adapter. Um, that's really it. When you're done with PVC, you have 90s, 45s, even 30-degree elbows that you can buy already pre-bent or you can heat it up and bend it yourself. And then you have your metal adapters and your couplings. Those are the main pieces. Uh, like I said, in, <clears throat> I think in part two we covered this. They do have LBs <clears throat> that are for PVC. See, there's no threads in there. So that pretty much covers PVC, um, except for the conduit itself, which, um, I think everybody's probably, probably knows what I'm talking about, but 
There it is, right there, that gray conduit. Okay, so that's that. We're going to move this way. Um, looks like I got a single game bell box there with the cover, radio, charger, all that stuff. Whoop -de -whoop. There's my half inch bender. Um, over here, I have some uh, Cat5 cable. Uh, some extra smoke detectors in there. And uh, this Cat5, you use it for your doorbells. It can be used for garage door sensor wires. Uh, of course, it's uh, for a phone line, for running your phones. And nowadays, they have uh, Ethernet cables uh, for your internet. Uh, so, that's that, Cat5. Again, doorbells, garage door openers, telephone, uh, and internet jacks. What else is there? I guess that's it. Cat5 cable. Um, we're going to go over here on my bench. I have all this stuff that needs to be cleaned and organized. Uh, yeah. There's just some junk over here. Uh, so I have a spring nut. That's for Unistrat. I think in part one we showed a cone nut. This would be a spring nut. Mm -hmm. Here's an acorn clamp. And that is for like if you run a, a ground rod into the ground. This would go over the ground rod. You run your bare copper wire on this side right there. See how it, it looks like an acorn. That wire would run right there alongside the ground ground uh, ground bar and you just tighten this guy up with your channel locks and that will give you your continuity to the ground. Um, some blue wire nut, blue wire nut here, this extra large wire nut. I think we went over this, we may have went over this part one, but real quick, this is extra large, blue, red is large, and then you get your like tan, which is a uh, like a medium along with the yellows. And then they have like you know different brands, different sizes. Here's one a little bit smaller, and they have even smaller ones for like what we just looked at the Cat Five cable. They have like real tiny wire nuts, which I have some, but I'm not sure where. But just FYI, um, just there's just chunk in this box really. Um, most of what we've already covered. I believe over here just have some tools, and going down here into my box. Uh, some just extra stashed wire, uh, mechanics tool, a crowbar there, uh, pretty much. What's that? Coming over here, it's just some more tools, ratchet straps, hard hat, things like that. Here we are, um, okay, this is a good one. Here we have uh, the Carflex cable. I know I've talked about the connectors, but we haven't actually gotten to see the cable yet, so. Here we are. Um, this is half inch Carflex. It's a non metallic tubing. And this is the half inch. You've seen the connectors. Here's the three quarter. And you see that it's a little bit bigger. Duh, right? That's half inch and three quarter Carflex. Here's, uh, I got some metal flex. And this is a half inch metal flex. And here's a three-quarter metal flex. Or basically, you would just call this flex. It wouldn't say metal flex. This is flex. And then here you have car flex. And you can get this car flex with this like metal flex on the inside. And that would be known as seal tight. MC and Romex cable. These are just like short pieces that hopefully I can use one day. And what do I have here? Uh, this is just like some stuff. I think we've already been over all this. This is a 632 screw, A32 staple. Drywall or wood screw. The 
This is known as a wall dog. You can just screw this straight into the sheetrock without, you know, just insta sheetrock, no stud required, and that will support wall dog. And we'll move over here to my table. I just got all kind of stuff here. Uh, let's start right here. Here I have mud rings. These are made to go on to 1900 boxes. Uh, there's different sizes you can see, like in this box, uh, the width that it comes out, that looks like a 5 8 5 8 is a pretty common size, but they have like a shorter one, 3 8 and then like, you see there is probably like an inch. Um, so there's a different uh, length on those, you got to be careful, you want to make sure you get the right one for what you're dealing with. You got 3 8 she rock, well then, or 5 8 she rock, and you would want the 5 8 covered, right? So it all depends on the she rock and how far you're coming out. So here I have a single gain muttering. And here I have a two gain muttering. This is what's known as a Myers hub. For if you're building a service or a panel, this would go into the top of an auxiliary gutter or troughed wireway, uh, tap can, whatever. You know, if it's sitting on the top where water would be coming in, you'd have to have a Myers hub. Now, if you're an elect if you're an electrician, you've seen this, or if you're an upcoming electrician, then you'll you'll eventually see this. But it's good to know that it's a Myers hub. It is required by code. Anytime you're penetrating the top of a of a wireway or auxiliary gutter, you're required to use one of those. Here I have a. This is a single gang or single single plug raised industrial cover. So you call that RDI raised or RID raised industrial cover. As a single, here I have a quad quad raised industrial cover, and basically this plate screws onto the 1900 box, and you can put your receptacles there as you can see, and that allows you to service mount plugs. Um, basic stuff, here's a 1900 blank, it's a blank plate for a 1900 box, uh, 4 40 blank, blank plate for 14 for a 40 box. Um, this is, these are anti short, aka Red Devils. Um, use this for MC wire. Uh, you can watch my video on how to strip MC cable and it will show you how to use those. Here I have some ground screws, ground into boxes. Looks like there's some smoke detectors there, PVC glue, some breakers. Um, if you're interested in learning more about breakers, I have a video electrical panel that explains the GE panel, but you can get the idea of any panel if you watch that video. Um, we're going to go right over here. I'm running out of time, so I want to make this as quick as possible. I have uh, some metal boxes here. And I just want to show you, like, that is a uh, 1900 bracket box. Um, and here, okay, let's see what we got here. Alright, yeah, so here I have a, this is a 40, 4.0 box, and there's two types, you can get deep and shallow. Um, so keep that in mind when you're ordering your boxes that there are two kinds, deep and shallow. This is a single gang handy box. This is a shallow 1900 box. And remember you can have shallow and deep. I believe this is a deep here, or it's a deep bracket, but you can see that that's deep. This is shallow 1900 box. Here's a 411 box, and basically it's a bigger box in a 1900, right? So this is a 1900 shallow, 411 shallow, and then your 1900 bracket. And that pretty much covers your metal boxes. Uh, I'm moving kind of quick here because we're running out of time on the video. Um, here I just have different cable. It's THHN cable there. Uh, there's some Romex, some more THHN. Very in there.
and uh, yeah, I kind of wanted to go over here and go into these uh, like residential boxes as well. So we went through the metal boxes, and here we have like this is a single gang nylon box, and it's for like wood stud residential homes. Um, this goes from single gain to four gain, so like that's a single. Here's a two gain, and then it would go to three gain, and then it would go to four gain. Four gain is the biggest box that you can get for the nylon type. After that, you'd have to get gangable metal boxes. Here's a four-o nylon, and there's also when you're doing doing residential, they have cut-in boxes that I don't think I have one. Pretty sure I was looking for one the other day and I don't have any, so but they basically what it is is it's like a, a single game blue box like this that has a there's wings on the corners, like there'd be one there, one there, and you can cut it into like a piece of uh, plywood or whatever, and like for the outside on the outside of a house, and you can use that to to put it in the wall and then there's those little wings on there that will tighten up and that's known as a cut-in box for residential. Um, and here I got some different things. Uh, real quick, I'm trying to, trying to finish up here. We got, this is known as a GFCI, GFCI outlet. Here you have a standard outlet and a decor outlet. That pretty much wraps up part three. Um, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do one more part, part four, and really, I could probably do part five, part six. There's just so much crap to go over, but we're gonna try to. We're gonna try to do the best we can. Um, I hope you found this educational, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.